Yes, Civil War veterans were still marching when I was a kid. Can you believe that? That is like, that is like Civil the War. You know, we must all have been about as old as I am now. <laughs> but they were still marching in, in the Memorial Day parades in my childhood. When I entered the service, the U.S. Army in 1943, I was already earmarked for language study. After basic training, I was sent to the University of California in Berkeley to learn a language called then Annamese, now known as Vietnamese. So I studied Vietnamese at, in Berkeley for nine months and then OSS recruited me and brought me back to Washington, D.C. I was trained to do code work, that is, to encode and decode secret messages. I was trained in Washington, D.C., and then sent overseas. And then I became a cryptographer, a code person. I at the war's end, I was in Rangoon when a mission came through that was going to Saigon in Vietnam to represent OSS and gather intelligence. I joined that group and we landed in Saigon in September 1945, right after the end of the war and we were the first Allied troops to arrive there. There were only eight of us. Uh, early in the following year, uh, a couple of us went to Hanoi and interviewed Ho Chi Minh, and we went there to see what was going on in Hanoi and spent six months there. So I met Ho Chi Minh in 1946, and... Uh, had a very interesting interview with him in which he talked about the desire, his country's desire for its independence. And Ho Chi Minh was the leader of the Vietnam movement for independence. In fact, it was he who had proclaimed the independence and in doing so quoted our Declaration of Independence or paraphrased it so that uh, he, he had a very strong sense of American democracy as his background. We were surprised that he spoke English. We thought the interview would be in French, which is the language that most educated Vietnamese speak. In fact, many who are uneducated, it's the common language. It was the common language of Vietnam before the war and up until 1945-46. But he spoke English, which he had learned in this country, and he was quite at home in that language. Well, our, quest, our mission to Ho Chi Minh was to ask him if he was a communist, and we knew the answer, everybody knew he was a communist, and whether the country was going to go communist, because the U.S. State Department was very anxious to know the answer to that question. Well, he said but I think he was being uh, diplomatic. He said, the people will have to decide that. I'm not going to dictate my wishes to the people. Well, as a matter of fact, Vietnam became a communist country, North Vietnam, first of all, and then after the long, long series of Vietnam wars, and there, were really, there was really a French war before the American war. Uh, the Chinese, the uh, communists prevailed. North Vietnam prevailed in the war, and the country is still communist. Peter Dooley was the commanding officer of the OSS mission to Saigon. He uh, had been, he spoke faultless French. In fact, he examined my French he gave me a one-word exam in French. He said, what is the French word for street? Well, everybody knows the French word for street, but most Americans can't pronounce it correctly. It's 
Re. Try saying that. <laughs> so he said, all right, you can go. I asked him, you know, I asked to join the mission. I wanted to go to Saigon since I'd studied the language and knew all about uh, Southeast Asia and all that sort of thing. When he landed in Saigon, he very quickly established connections with the Vietnamese leaders. Now, the French were not happy about this. The French who occupied the colony, who occupied the country, uh, didn't want anybody promoting independence. And uh, Peter Dewey would meet with the Vietnamese leaders uh, in secret. And sometimes I did too. And uh, the sad thing is that uh, he was killed by the Vietnamese in a mistake. They mistook him for a Frenchman. He was driving through a roadblock in a Jeep and they had a machine gun trained on that roadblock and killed him. And uh, that was the sad end of Peter Dewey. The only firefight I was ever involved in came as a result of the death of Peter Dewey. When he was killed, the Vietnamese who killed him, there was a small group of Vietnamese soldiers attacked us. We were just a short distance down the road and they attacked us and for several hours, we had a battle on our hands, but uh, we were more experienced in the use of firearms than they were, and we drove them away. <laughs>